what is wrong with this thing now? Let's check this thing out. Okay, let's see, poor acceleration. Seemed like it was idling funny. I think I know where to look. All right, I wanna get under here. Oh, look at that. That looks like I got an idea for another video. Hey friends, it's Len from 1A Auto. Today I wanted to talk to you about if you're having a problem with your vehicle and you happen to notice that you're having an issue with acceleration. Maybe it just seems a little doggy and it doesn't want to go when you first accelerate. Or when you're sitting idling, you happen to notice that your RPMs or your engine speed tends to go up and down kind of erratically. I want to get into it. Let's do it. One of the first things we have to do to start diagnosing this, of course, is to find the throttle body. Like I said, you're going to want to follow the air filter along the air duct and it's going to lead you to the engine. The part closest to the engine, where the intake is, is where the throttle body's gonna be. So as you can tell, not all vehicles are the same. You find your air box, you follow the inlet, it's gonna lead you right down to the throttle body. The throttle body's gonna be in between the air inlet and of course the air intake, which is attached to the engine. In older vehicles with carburetors, the throttle body's gonna be integrated in with the carburetor. So now that we have that out of the way, we have a clear view of the outside of the throttle body. Of course, all this out here really isn't gonna make much of a difference, an exception of the seal in between here and the actual intake itself, but we'll talk about that in a minute. If I was to look along this area, which is where the hose was connected, you wanna look for any dark areas, some areas that maybe look like they have some dark carbon or debris of any sort. Anything like that that you might see could cause this to restrict in some way, which of course would cause a delay in acceleration when you go to accelerate. What happens is, is when you go to accelerate, the little flap inside here is supposed to open up. And as it opens up, it makes it so your vehicle is gonna draw in more air. If it's getting blocked by anything, such as any of this debris or carbon that's in there, of course it's gonna cause a delay or even erratic idle. Now, as we're taking this apart, anytime I remove an electrical connector, I always like to take a peek. You wanna make sure you don't see any funny colors in there. If you see any reds, blues, rust, or anything like that, you need to make sure you either clean it up or of course replace it. Of course, if this side has an issue, this side might as well, so take a peek at that. Any type of corrosion or issue that's in between the electrical areas could cause resistance, and of course, that's gonna cause an issue as well. Okay, so now we're just gonna remove this from the vehicle, so of course, there's gonna be some mounting nuts and probably a couple of hoses that go to it. Okay, friends, so we made our way over to the bench with a couple of throttle bodies here because I wanna be able to show you them right out in the open. If you were to look at the front of this, you can tell that it's not really in the worst of conditions. Yeah, there is some carbon buildup that you can see all along that flap right there. Would I say that it's horrible? No. Is it gonna cause an issue? Probably not, just looking at it as it is right now. Of course, if I was to turn it over and look at the backside, we've got a kind of different story here. All this black down along here is all carbon buildup. Look at it, it's flaking right up. This is horrible. So as this is trying to turn or spin so it can open up, as you accelerate, any of this that's built up could be slowing this down from moving. If you were to look at this one over here, this is an extreme case. The front side, as you can tell, looks horrible, worse than the other one did on the back side. Now if I was to turn this over, holy moly. This is very bad. You can see all over this thing, it is so bad. This is of course gonna cause an issue. If you are having an issue with acceleration or any of the symptoms that I had mentioned before, that's what you're gonna see on the backside more than likely. When it comes time to cleaning these, you definitely wanna make sure you don't go with something that looks like this, where it says multi-purpose solvent or parts cleaner or anything like that. It needs to specifically say carb, choke, and throttle body cleaner. That's very important, okay? Okay, so at this point, we're gonna talk about cleaning down that throttle body. So the first thing that we need to talk about in this aspect is safety. Make sure you're wearing hand protection and eye protection. That's both very important because we're gonna be dealing with chemicals, specifically the throttle body cleaner. Now looking at the throttle body, we're gonna clean up the front area first. Something that's important to think about is you wanna use a nice soft bristle brush, okay? You don't wanna use a metal brush or anything like that, and you especially don't wanna use a screwdriver. So if I was using this, you could use it to try to get up just the hardest bits, but you definitely don't wanna go scraping up your whole uh, throttle body because any imperfections that you make inside here could cause an issue with the airflow mixture overall. Over a nice collection bucket like what we have here so we can recycle the fluid properly, we're gonna go ahead and spray this down and let it soak. Something to pay attention to is of course this shaft right here. It's gonna be attached to the interior area here. There's gonna be a seal of course, but we don't necessarily need to try to force any fluid inside there. So as we clean this, 
Don't tip it this way, so the fluid's gonna try to make its way inside of the electronic throttle body. I'll hold it just like this. I'm gonna give it a nice spray. It's gonna, of course, come spraying back a little bit, so keep your eyes away. Spray it down, let it sit. This is gonna start eating away at all that carbon that's in there. While that's happening, I can take my nice soft brush here. I'm just gonna work it around. This is great. As I'm doing that, I'm paying special attention not to push too hard on this butterfly and mess up the calibration of your electronic throttle body. If your throttle body is not electronic and it has a little cable with a lever, you can go ahead and pull on that lever and you can open this up. If it's electronic, do not. So we got the front side as clean as possible. That looks great. Now we need to make sure we do the same to the back side. Now if your throttle body looks like this one, as I said before, this is an extreme case. If it looks like this, odds are you're not gonna be able to get off all of that carbon just by some light scraping and cleaning and all that stuff. It's still gonna be kind of gunked up. You can try and you can reinstall it and hopefully it works for you. If for some reason it doesn't, it's probably because the carbon buildup is too much and it's just not gonna function right off the bat. If that's the case, I would go to 1AAuto.com and I would check us out to order a new one. Now going from something that looks like this to something that looks a lot more like that, obviously your vehicle is gonna run a lot better. Something to think about is that the throttle body isn't the only cause of these symptoms all the time. There are other parts on the vehicle that could cause similar symptoms. Could be something such as maybe an air filter. If your air filter is dirty or clogged in any way, that's gonna cause an issue. Most vehicles are gonna have a mass airflow sensor. If that's dirty, same thing, gonna have an issue. Low fuel pressure, obviously that's no good. Maybe you have a frozen pulley on that belt system. If you have a pulley that's seizing up and the serpentine belt's having a hard time turning, that's gonna, of course, cause an issue. One last thing that I, of course, check would be a vacuum leak. That's something that's a little bit harder to check, but if you were to tug on your hoses or even just kind of listen as the vehicle's running, you might happen to hear one. All right, so if you liked the video, make sure you smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. If you learned something or if you got something to say, please leave it in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. That way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door. The place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.